Трансляція пристату. Наргайте. Арберньюкас. Тоні Бет. Сякме Тоні Зоя. You're coming from the sports family. I mean, your brothers, sisters, almost everybody is in one way or another in basketball. But uh, who was the starter? Who, who, who was the guy or, or, or the lady who injected this love of basketball? Basketball, basically my brother, Luis. Uh, in general sport, my, my father plays hockey. Hockey and... Ice hockey or...? No. The regular hockey with uh, with wheels, uh, with tire, yes, uh, but not in a professional way. And but my brother uh, provides all of us to to our wish for play basketball. Not not so during Spain. Uh, there are at least one years before everybody said that the people who plays uh, football uh, is not the the most smartest sportive. No, it's it's so stupid sentence, but it's true that. Always, uh, maybe 20 or 30 years ago, everybody who plays basketball, also uh, there are good students in the college or in the, in the high schools or whatever, but not the footballs. It's uh, quite stupid. And then it's true that my 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 older brother are pushing us to uh, to go in this way. And and after everybody in my family, uh, our coaches or our referees or our players, and many of them are also playing uh, Spanish championships. And, and it's true that if you come one day in my home for lunch or dinner, and if you are not talking about basketball, you are totally boring, probably. Like yes. You worked in prison before your coaching career. And uh, basically, in one of the interviews, you said that it was uh, for the money you had to provide. But at the same time, it might have been quite an experience for you. Yes, there are 14 years that I work in the jail. Uh, my first year uh, in, in the jail, uh, 200 kilometers away from Barcelona. Uh, with the, in Spain, there are uh, jails for the younger, jails for a woman, jails for uh, uh, adults, but not so dangerous, and another for a really dangerous. And I begin in this really dangerous uh, jail, yes, because I, I know has a really good average when I make the exam and then they send me to the words. Uh, but I, I go and come back every day for practice and it's a so crazy year because I only spend one year there. But it's true that uh, to work in a jail, first of all, provides you the, the chance to feel like a privileged guy working when you finally work in, in your dream. Also provo uh, provokes that you are uh, thinking that when you lose three games in a row and all the fans and included the president of your clubs are stressed a lot, you you understand that it's it's so it's a difficult moment maybe, but it's not as as difficult like when you are in a jail and somebody are one gun in front of you or uh, also you understand that many people works uh, a lot for sit here on the. Uh, on Zalgiro and another James, and paying maybe the ten percent of their salary for looking that. What I think that my, my, the difference between another coaches and me, I'm not better than them. But it's true that I has another culture than them. I can appreciate better what the people suffer for coming here. What what's the important is that you are every time in the morning you are rising and smiling and giving you best till the moment that maybe you need to disappear or not. But there are no time for cry. There are no time for feel you bad because you lose one game. No, 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 no. You, I think that uh, the jail provides me uh, not only some kind of brave situations that I need to live there inside, provide me about some kind of deeper mentality who permit me understand basketball in another way. Coach, uh, which club or which moment can you describe like a turning point of your career? I mean, so far you've come uh, through a lot of teams, through a lot of stages. Was it one moment that you finally understand this is the job, I'm good at it. And I'm going to continue to pursue to be the best. When I am younger, I play basketball, but I, I see that I saw that never I gonna be Michael Jordan. No, I, ne I saw that I never ge gonna be one good professional player like I understand. And I, 
I had uh, plenty good success with the smaller teams and, and at the same time I'm not a great student and I coaching two or three teams at the same time, same season and I had problems at the end of the season because many of these teams are playing some finals on the same day and almost the same hour I need to choose and it's so funny but it's not so so important for finally decide that they're going to be a head coach but it's true that I dream, I has uh, I understand that I have this capacity for be a leader of some group uh, but the key moment that you asked me it's in in Madrid I think probably but it's in Madrid uh, when Bosa Marqui asked me for be assistant coach of him I go directly has no doubts in my family my wife don't understand that I go there because the salary is worse than in Madalona uh, I need to pay my my own apartment I live in a an apartment maybe 50 meters apartment in uh, really bad conditions but uh, I think that this is the way that I need to take it it's one great opportunity for me I'm, I live really well in Badalona beside my home I, I, I sleep every day in my, my, my bed but I think that I need to make this, this step and after this year well, uh, I, li I, I live at one important moment because uh, the club uh, fired out Bosa Markovic and then they asked me uh, about the about the new coaches and but they never thought that I can be the head coach at Real Madrid and then I give some names I know that they are um, they meet it with these new coaches like uh, Aito Arciarneses they talk also, also with Repesa with Mahmuti and I provide the telephone number some kind of uh, documents about these persons but when they are working this way they propose me to be an all-time assistant coach for next year and I said no I don't want to be assistant coach uh, more because I have plenty of experience before and then I understand that you don't choose me but I are gonna coach in the second divisions or in this moment that I am close to be in Jordan in Beirut and then they convinced me but how do you have said no to Real Madrid to be assistant coach is really important for you for your career no no I don't want to be and yeah but you have the contract of the other teams in France or in Beirut or whatever no I have not this contract but I'm gonna fight for this I'm sure of myself okay take one day no no uh, I need it just two hours I, I'm gonna take the decision by myself and then I make two laps totally laps during almost one hour and a half from Bernabeu football uh, football stadium and then I talk my 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 family also I talk my friends and the people don't believe so much that you uh, on your dreams and the way that the people understand that you have this capacity but not enough for saying no to Real Madrid and then many of these persons tell me, no, you need to sign with Real Madrid like assistant coach. And finally, they convinced me. I said, okay, I'm going to be assistant coach. And, and we keep working, looking at this head coach for Real Madrid. And it's so, na so in nice because uh, finally, after Aito said no and Repesa said no, I go to Ireland with my wife just for a week. And I know that they are fighting for Mahmoudi, for the Turkish uh, coach. And then I'm, I'm in, in Ireland and my, my parents call me one day and tell me uh, in newspaper said that maybe you're going to be the, the new head coach and okay, don't believe it because you know, you know the, the people talk so much about this but there are one special day that uh, the president of Real Madrid called me uh, and I'm really close to du Dublin and tell me uh, are you ready for being a head coach and well, I cry. I, I not only cry, I make a picture of my feet because I will like to remember the day that somebody proposed me to be a head coach, professional head coach. And it's so funny, not because I cry, not just because I make a picture of my feet in the same spot where somebody proposed me to be a head coach. Uh, it's so funny because we're going to try to celebrate with my wife, but this small village close to Dublin, uh, there are only one pub, don't pub. And I never drink beer. I never drink it whiskey, but the only thing that you can drink. <laughs> and then my Silent. wife, yeah, and then my wife drinks uh, bla black, black beer. And I said, okay, I'm gonna try to drink whiskey. No, my first whiskey of my life. And I take my, my first whiskey there, we celebrate, which is, I think in this moment, my wife really begins that, uh, to, to believe on me. And also the people who helped me a lot in, in my career, things that I has this capacity, uh, we, I know that Real Madrid assigned me like a second plate, like we said in Spain. I'm not the first option for them. And then also I know that my contract is really short. Uh, they're going to pay me the less capacity money. Uh, 
but I fight and then actually who has the record of victories in a row in Real Madrid history and it's because I, ha I put my best and also the players helped me a lot to win some kind of championships but we begin really well and during this season I resigned my contract two times more. I signed one contract in, in uh, July, at the end of July or August almost, another in December and another in March. Uh, giving more years, a little bit more money, more confidence in me. Then I think it's the, the key moment in my life. Being the first Catalonian coach in Madrid, uh, was it something different? Made some tensions for you to work here? Or, or is this thing uh, just overestimated? No, no, it's true that it's so strange that nobody, that somebody from Barcelona are able to coach in Real Madrid because it never happened in the history before. But I, I always said that the, the troubles provide you about culture. And sometimes you need to take your bags for see the other side of the mirror. Uh, and in Catalonia, it's true that we are thinking that many times uh, the rest of the Spain, especially from Madrid, they has a bad view about jazz. And, and then you need to live in the other side and try to understand also what's uh, the meaning of uh, the Madrid person who lives there, also in Sevilla. Uh, and then I think that nobody can can look on me as somebody who creates problems. I remember that after one year, we finally win one with Real Madrid, the championship ACB in Barcelona score. And many people are really happy, not for because we won the, the championship, they are happy because we won in, Real Madrid, in Barcelona score. And then I, I, I think that the coaches need to, to take care about our uh, media conference in the way that I, I hate when I hear some coaches in football, basketball, handball, whatever sport, who is talking about some games like a wars, like a battles, like a... No, 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 we, we cannot provoke the people who are uh, more, more crazy or they are more stressed for the games. The game is game, it's, it's, a, it's a game. And then uh, what I will tell you is that I try to control every kind of expressions from here. When I am here in Lithuania, I think that never uh, I talk bad about the two balls, about the tune of a Pirinai, about nobody. I respect 100%. And it's true that we need to take care about ourselves and we need to show our own way to, to do the things. But I don't understand the sport like uh, something who uh, create more aggressivity in the society. And uh, I'm going to try to go in this way. And in Barcelona, like Madrid, I am able to be the best amb amb ambassador from, from Catalonia in Madrid, but also in Madrid from Barcelona. Uh, we need to understand that the, sometimes the media are interested to provoke this kind of uh, conflicts between uh, cities, between the regions, between countries and the coaches, because we are talking so often to the media, we need to try to take it easy, try to make the things going on and try to reduce the maximum the conflict as, as much as possible the conflict between us. Thank <laughs> you.